In this video, I'm going to be talking about will a projectile clear an obstacle or reach an elevated position? So we're working on a projectile problem that has a specific goal, which is trying to figure out whether it's going to clear some sort of vertical obstacle. So this particular problem says a baseball struck at 60 degrees, causing it to have an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. Will it clear an eight meter wall at its peak, at the peak of its flight? And then also will it clear a fence that's 17 meters away if the fence is two meters tall? So we're gonna start out the problem as we would with most angled projectile type problems, which is basically forming a triangle and then figuring out the components of the triangle. So we know that this main component of the velocity is 15 meters per second. And we're gonna make that the hypotenuse of our triangle. It struck 60 degrees from the horizontal. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a Y component and X component. All right, so let's go ahead and find the vertical and horizontal components so we can place it into our table here and have our values nicely organized so we can proceed with the problem. All right, so I went ahead and solved for the components. I used the um, cosine function for my adjacent side. So it's adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side is what I call the VX, and the hypotenuse is the main velocity of 15. And I did, did something similar for the Y component, except I used sine because sine is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And then I basically multiplied both sides by 15 to get both of my components here. So on the left side, um, I just put V equals 7.5 meters per second. I didn't add a subscript to it because in the horizontal direction, there are no forces acting on the projectile. Therefore, it's in constant motion. So there is no initial and final velocity. It's just one constant velocity. On the vertical end, we know that gravity is acting in the vertical direction. So there is going to be some acceleration as it's rising and falling. So I do want to have a subscript, I call it VI, because it's the initial velocity of how quickly it's popped up off the ground. So we also have our acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared, as we always do on the vertical end. And the thing about all of these kinematic formulas that have acceleration in them, for all of them, you need at least three variables. So we already got two, so we just needed to decide what um, we want to use in addition to those two so that we could have three and then solve for what we need. So let's take a look at this problem first. Will it clear an eight meter wall at its peak? Okay. So in physics, a lot of times when people see numbers, they have a tendency to grab them and plug them in. Um, we don't need to plug in this eight meters and two meters. They're just used to compare what we get for a delta Y to see if it's greater or less than those values. Um, so because it says at its peak, we know something specific about its uh, velocity at the peak of its flight. It has no vertical velocity at that point. So we'll say the VF equals zero meters per second. Okay. So at the peak of its arc, where it's going like this, it is not moving upwards or downwards at the very peak of its flight. It's just moving horizontally at 7.5 meters per second still, um, but it's not rising or falling at that specific um, moment in its flight. So we do have our three numbers now, so we can go ahead and use those three to see what the delta Y is at that point, and then see if that delta Y is greater or less than eight meters.
All right, so I went ahead and used this formula over here. Um, the way you know how to choose the formula is you take a look at what variables you have and then think about what you're looking for. We're looking for the delta y. So these two formulas over here have a delta y in them, but this one requires time and I don't have time. So I'm going to use this one because it's time independent. So I plugged in my final velocity of zero, zero squared is zero, 12.99 squared um, comes out to 168.74. So what I did is I subtracted that from both sides, which basically creates a negative 168.74 on this side. And then I combined the two and the negative 9.8 to make it negative 19.6. So at this point, it was negative 168.74 equals negative 19.6 times delta y divided both sides by the negative 19.6, and I got 8.61 meters. So that is clearly larger than eight meters. So the answer is yes, because it is greater than that eight meter wall. All right, now for the second part of our problem, we wanna figure out, um, will it clear a fence that's 17 meters away if it is two meters tall? Okay, now for our second part of the problem, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and erase this value because that doesn't apply anymore. Okay, we don't have a final velocity of zero. We have some other final velocity because now it's falling down and it's actually gaining some vertical velocity. Okay, we still have these as our initial conditions. So those still work, those still apply to our second problem. So I'm gonna leave those in our column of values. Now, what else do we get, get in addition? Um, it says, will it clear a fence that's 17 meters away? if it's two meters tall. So they gave us a 17 meters, which is our delta X. Okay, and it doesn't look like I'm given anything else. Um, so what we can do is if we're taking a look at each of these sides, as I said, on this side, we always need three values, but on this side, we actually only need two because there's three variables overall. So if we have two out of the three, we can solve for the third one. So if you just do delta X, which is 17 over T that equals 7.5. And then we can pretty easily solve for our T. I can basically just cross multiply those two. And then the 7.5 will drop under the 17. And then the time will come out to be 2.27. Okay, so the reason I wrote that in the center uh, is it can be used in the X or Y column because time does not have a direction. It's just the duration that the projectile is in the air for. So that's helpful because now that we got this value from the X side, we can also use that on the Y side. Okay, so again, we're looking for a delta Y and we're looking for a delta Y using these three values, the VI, the A, and the new T that we found. So I'm gonna look at these two formulas and now that we have the T, it looks like we can go ahead and use this second one over here. So I'm gonna plug in all my values into this second formula and then see what I get for my delta Y. So I got a final value of 4.24 meters for my delta Y. So clearly that is greater than the two meter tall fence that was 17 meters away. Um, so what I did is if I multiply these two numbers, I have a positive number. And then you have to be careful because when you multiply these three numbers, you have a negative number because of the negative 9.8. So you're basically just subtracting these two numbers to get your 4.24 meters. So to sum things up, when you start one of these angled projectile type problems, the first thing you're gonna do is create a triangle where your main velocity is going to be the hypotenuse of your triangle. You're gonna use an angle and then sine and cosine to find your different X and Y components. So it is a really, really important step that you organize your information in two different columns, an X and Y column, because the only variable that you can use in either column is the time. So you wanna make sure anything that's going in the horizontal direction you place over here because it can only be placed into this formula, which is a constant velocity formula. And then anything you place over here 
you want to make sure it's only going in the vertical direction because it only applies to these three accelerated kinematic formulas. Now, once you have any, everything organized, we have our X and our Y component to start us off. We also always have a negative 9.8 in our Y column. Now that's already a really good start because if you have a second value in your X column, you can solve for a variable. And then if you have a third value in your vertical column, you can solve for a value. So what that means is you'll be able to either directly find your solution or you'll have to solve for another value that will lead you to your solution. So an example would be when we use that VF of zero early on, which is right over here. And then that one number allowed us to find our solution outright by using that third accelerated kinematic formula with the VF squared and the VI squared. Okay, the example of finding a variable that would lead us to the solution is our second one, where we had a delta x of 17 that allowed us to find a time, and that time we plugged in over here in our vertical column, and then we're able to find our delta y over here by plugging into our, um, our other formula with time in it. So I hope that was helpful in helping you understand, set up, and solve a projectile type problem that will possibly clear an obstacle or reach an elevated position. Thank you for watching and listening.